I've got the top budget audio interfaces here and I've tested each one for vocal recordings, sound quality, even headphone levels. So which ones sound the best and which one has the most unique and useful features? I'll cover everything, including the pros and cons for each. And you'll even get to hear the sound of air, vintage and 4K, what's that? I've included vocal samples recorded on all these interfaces at the end of the video so you can hear them side by side and you'll find the best prices for them below the video. Do you remember the 21st night of September? Love was changing the minds of pretenders. We're chasing the clouds away. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. While we dance in the night, remember the stars stole the night away. I'm using the Earthworks SR314 for all the recordings, more on this mic later. Let's start with the most popular interface in this list, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. This is the fourth gen version. It came out about a month ago and wow, have they improved it. This audio interface has high quality sound and special features you won't find on other interfaces in this list. By the way, all the interfaces here have two inputs, for mics, guitars, and instruments, and they all have stereo outputs that will go to your speakers. They all work with any DAW on Mac or PC. So what makes the Scarlett 2i2 special? Well, it's all about the new features for this one. You've got better converters in the fourth gen version, which gives you better clarity, less noise. And for those of you who have the third gen Scarlett, it's actually a noticeable difference. The Scarlett also improved the meters, which used to just flash, but are now much easier to read. The Scarlett has three unique features that are kind of hard to find in other interfaces. The first one is air mode that gives you the sound of Focusrite's more expensive preamps. It's a sound you may or may not like, but at least you have the option. By the way, the Universal Audio and SSL interfaces also have a similar feature. We'll hear them side by side later. The 2i2 also has auto gain and a safe mode. These are useful features if you're just starting out, but if you're used to setting gain yourself, you may not need them. In a nutshell, these two features prevent you from clipping or ending up with distorted audio. Again, good for beginners or if you have an unexpectedly loud singer or podcast guest. So how about some drawbacks? Well, when I tested my headphones, the Biodynamic 250 ohm headphones, I couldn't get the volume loud enough. But these Biodynamics are high impedance, so your headphones may be fine. But other interfaces in this list will give you better headphone output. The Scarlett doesn't have a monitor mix knob, so there's no way to adjust the balance between the music from your DAW and the sound you're recording. More on that when we check out the next interface that has it. Also, the Scarlett isn't cheap. It's $199 right now at the top end of the prices here. So does sound quality really change a lot with the cheapest interface here? Let's find out with the Evo 4 next. By the way, a quick word about latency. All these interfaces have some latency. Latency is delay caused by audio having to go into your computer and then back to your interface. But all of them feature direct monitoring, which lets you get around the latency issue. Direct monitoring allows you to hear the direct input of the sound you're recording, along with the music from your DAW so that you can sing or play in time. Okay, the Evo 4 is the cheapest interface in this list at $129. And even at that price, you get all the basic features, a combo mic slash instrument input, a high Z input for guitars, and phantom power. Phantom power is used for certain mics, mostly condenser mics like the SR314 I'm using today. All these interfaces have phantom power. And get this, the Evo 4 also includes that auto gain feature. It sets the gain for you. Now, the layout is extremely simple, but that means fewer knobs and buttons and more clicks to get to the feature you want, a little more work, and it's not as easy to get used to. But that does give us a very compact package. This is the most compact interface in this list. But the build quality is pretty low too. Everything is plastic. The Evo 4 has another standout feature that some interfaces here don't have, 
a monitor mix control. The monitor mix control lets you adjust the mix between the voice or instrument you're recording and the music from your DAW. It's very useful when you're tracking vocals. You can adjust how much of your voice or the music you hear in your headphones. The Evo 4 has decent headphone loudness, but the recording quality doesn't compare to some of the interfaces here, and some reviewers have said that there is noise and static when recording. Here's a quick comparison of the Evo 4 and the Scarlett 2i2, the lowest and high end of the price ranges here. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. You can listen to more at the end of this video. The Evo 4 is a good starter interface and won't break the bank, but if the best sound quality is what you're looking for, the higher priced interfaces in this list will be a better choice. By the way, I'm using the Earthworks SR314 to record my vocals today. The SR314 is a condenser mic that is made for live performance, but I love the sound of this mic so much, I like using it in my studio. The build is top notch. It's fully steel, the sound quality is amazing, and I just love my voice on this mic. If you sing live, you'll love this mic. It gives you the pristine clarity of a studio condenser, but it's built to handle stage performance. My cousin performs live all the time, and he actually took my original SR314 because he loved it so much, and he carries it with him to every performance. That says something. I'll add links to the Earthworks SR314 in the video description below. I'm super excited to share my thoughts on the SSL2 because this is the newest interface I have and the one I was most excited about. The SSL name is synonymous with some of the most well-known studios around the world, so having it on your audio interface is a big deal. So does it deliver? Well, the SSL sounds great. I can't complain about the sound at all. And this is one of the three interfaces in this list that has another recording flavor. SSL calls it 4K, and it gives you the sound of the classic SSL consoles from Pro Studios. 4K sounds good, but remember, the Scarlett gives you the air feature that may rival this. I'll let you hear some samples when we check out the Volt interface later in the video, so you can compare them side by side. On the SSL2, I love that there's a button or knob for everything, and the layout is clear and easy to read. This has one of my favorite control layouts of all these interfaces, and it has dedicated phantom power buttons, one of only two interfaces with dedicated 48V buttons in this list. This interface does take up a lot of space. It's the biggest one here. Now, on the downside, this interface doesn't seem as sturdy as other similarly priced interfaces here. From pictures, I was expecting a high-end build, but the design feels like you'll have to be careful when traveling with it. All the other interfaces in this video have better build except for the Evo 4. Now, if you like the option of having that 4K flavor, we better compare it to the Scarlett and Volt interfaces. Let's do that now. This is the Volt 2 by Universal Audio, and yes, it has that extra flavor button, just like the Scarlett and SSL2. Universal Audio calls it vintage, and it gives you the sound of their 610 preamp. Again, it's an alternative to the standard sound this interface can record. Let's listen to the sound of vintage compared to the Scarlett's Air and the SSL's 4K mode. Do you remember the 21st night of September? Do you remember the 21st night of September. Do you remember the 21st night of September? So, which one did you prefer? Comment below. I like the sound of the Volt's vintage mode more than the others. The Scarlet Air mode sounded a bit thin and the SSL's 4K a bit harsh. This is really up to taste and I find that people are kind of split on which one they prefer, so I'd like to know from you all too. Now, would you really use these optional recording modes? Maybe you just want the cleanest sound possible. That's up to you and something to keep in mind when deciding which one to get. By the way, I've processed my vocals with Sonable plugins, including the Sonable Smart Compressor, Smart Deesser, and Smart Reverb. All of these plugins sound excellent and I love using them because they take the guesswork out of getting the settings right. They use AI to listen to your source sound and then give you the best suggested settings for your sound. You can tweak them after, of course. If you're interested in checking out the Sonable plugins, I'll put links to them below the video. So the Volt is a budget interface 
from a company with a really good reputation making much more expensive interfaces. The Volt gives you all the basic features, a nice layout, and it adds MIDI ins and outs. The first interface in this list with MIDI connections. This is useful if you have an old keyboard that you want to connect to your computer. This interface is also priced appropriately in my opinion. You get all the features of the SSL2 and most of the Scarlett features, but for less money at $169. The Volt, however, does not have a monitor mix control like the Evo and the next interface we'll look at, the Minifuse by Artoria. Oh, before I get to that, I should also mention that Universal Audio also makes a 276 interface, which is more expensive, but includes a compressor built in. And that compressor is modeled after the famous 1176 compressor. The Volt 276 is more expensive, but if you're really interested in the Volt series, it's worth considering. The Artoria Minifuse is a great interface with a super unique trick, and it ticks a lot of boxes as well. As far as sound quality goes, it kind of sits in the middle in my opinion, but they have thrown a lot of features into this little box. You get combo inputs, a nice output meter, monitor mix, and direct monitor mono buttons. And in the back, you've got MIDI ins and outs and a USB port. You can actually use this as a USB hub for a MIDI keyboard, for example. It's kind of cool. Any drawbacks? Well, the gain lights on the Minifuse are a bit hard to read, not as nice as the meters on the Scarlett and the SSL. And if you really want the best sound quality, you might like the sound of the Motu interface in this list. It's one of my favorites. But Artoria offers a great warranty on this interface, I think the best among all of these, and the software package included is excellent as well, as good as the software you get with the Scarlett. If you're looking for headphones for your studio, I actually recently tested the best at every price level to help you find the right one or two for you. Watch that video right here. I want to mention another interface that kind of ticks the same boxes as the Artoria Minifuse. This is the Personas 24C. If you're getting a Personas interface, this is the budget one that I prefer. You can get a cheaper one, but this will give you better sound quality and the build is a lot nicer. The 24C has all the same features of the Minifuse, except for the USB hub thing, but I prefer the sound quality of the Minifuse. The 24C, however, has better meters for the input gain. It's just easier to read. Now, you may listen to the audio samples at the end and not notice much of a difference at all. I think it's going to come down to taste when you're at this price range. The Personas layout and build feels a little dated, and I don't like the placement of the 48V button. Every time I go for the volume, I end up touching the 48V. Otherwise, this is a decent interface with all the basics included. So let's talk about the Motu M2 next. The Motu M2 held the top spot for sound quality for quite some time now. People seem to love the sound that the converters and the preamps put out. I do too, and this was one of my favorites until the Scarlet 4th Gen was introduced. Now I feel like they're kind of on par with each other. But unlike the Scarlet, Volt, and SSL interfaces, you're not going to get any other recording flavors. But there's still a lot to love about the M2. First, this is one of the only interfaces with dedicated phantom power buttons for each input. That's useful if you're recording two mics and only one of them needs phantom power. The meters on the Motu M2 are the best in this roundup, hands down. It's just so easy to read on this high res screen. The Motu M2 also gives you MIDI ins and outs, which is nice, and a power button, cool. So you don't get that air, vintage, or 4K mode, but at $199, I think the Motu M2 still holds its ground. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos about music production and the latest gear on my channel. I do my research and bring you helpful tips every week. Okay, last but certainly not least, this is the Audient ID4. And Audient is well known for excellent sound quality on their ID range of interfaces. And this is the least expensive in the ID line, but that still puts it at the high end of the prices here at $199. The ID4 is super compact for an interface and the top controls are really nice. The 4K button is on the back, but you will get the indicator up here. The interface also has a special button marked 
ID. The ID button lets you use the knob as a scroll wheel for your computer to control plugins or scroll things. I'm not sure why you'd use this. I prefer doing this stuff with my mouse or a MIDI controller. Anyway, the ID4 has two headphone outputs, which is pretty unique. This interface has good meters and an excellent build quality. And Lots of people rave about the sound and the low noise, but hey, that's something you'll need to decide for yourself with the recordings. You don't get any extra features on this, no air mode, no MIDI ins and outs. It's pretty minimal, and that might just be what you want. By the way, if you're thinking about using one of these interfaces with a mic like the Shure SM7B that needs lots of gain, most of these interfaces will do just fine, except for the Evo 4 and the Presona, so keep that in mind. Other mics should be fine with any of these interfaces. So some final words before we get to the audio recordings. Trust your ears, buy what you can afford. In a mix, many of these interfaces sound nearly the same and your listeners may not hear the difference. It's more important for you to just start making music and sharing what you create. All right, have fun listening to the audio recordings and let me know your favorite in the comments below. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. So which were my favorites? I prefer the recorded sound quality of the Scarlett, Motu, and Volt interfaces, especially the Volt's vintage mode. But honestly, they all sound so close in a mix, you'll be fine with any of them. Hey, if you're looking for the best headphones or studio monitors for your studio, watch the videos here. Make the music you love, and I'll see you in the next video.